Here's how to make the perfect Christmas turkey and a delicious gravy to go with it. First of all, we need to make a delicious herb and garlic butter. For that, take 250 grams of unsalted butter and place it into a mixing bowl. And then roughly chop 15 grams of sage leaves and pick around five grams of thyme leaves. Then place them into the bowl with the butter and then we'll crush in four cloves of garlic. Add in a pinch of sea salt and black pepper and then mix it all together until it's fully incorporated. Next, we need to take our turkey and then try and lift the skin that is covering the breast. So to do that, just take your hand and just gently tease it away on the inside until there's a pocket formed between the skin and the breast meat. Then take all of that delicious butter and spread it under the skin. Next, we need to season the inside of the cavity with salt and pepper. And then we're gonna cut three clementines into slices and the rest into wedges. Place the slices underneath the skin with the butter and then put the wedges inside the cavity. And with the rest of the time, just place that inside the cavity as well. Now we're gonna lay 20 rashes of smoky, streaky bacon over the top of the turkey breast. And all those delicious flavors are gonna release into the turkey as it cooks. Next, we're gonna wedge up three brown onions and roughly chop two carrots and two sticks of celery. And then we're gonna lay those onto a tray and this is gonna be for the turkey to sit on and it will also form the foundations of our gravy. Place the turkey into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius fan and cook it for 30 minutes per kilo. Mine weighs 4.8 kilos, so I'm gonna cook mine for two hours, 40 minutes to three hours. After the first hour, have a look at the turkey and then baste it with any of the juices just by spooning them over the top. And then to stop the bacon crisping up anymore, I'm just gonna cover it with tin foil and place it back in the oven for the remainder of the cooking time. Now you can baste it two or three more times if you'd like in between before the end of the cooking time, or it's fine just to leave it as it is. That's entirely up to you. Take the turkey from the oven and place it onto another tray to rest. You want to rest it for at least one hour or ideally half the amount of time you cooked it. Here's a quick tip for carving your turkey. What I like to do is cut along the back of the turkey and then just gently work your way down until the full turkey breast comes off. Then place the turkey breast onto a chopping board and simply slice it up. That way you get beautiful slices of turkey without it falling apart. Now the time has come to talk gravy. So you need to take the tray with all of that beautiful roast veg from roasting the turkey and place that over a medium heat on the hob. Bring the fat and cooking juices up to a simmer and then sprinkle in 90 grams of plain flour. Give everything a good mix around and cook for three to four minutes. Next, you wanna deglaze the pan with 250 mils of white wine. Pour the wine in and then rub the wooden spoon around to take any of those stuck on bits off the bottom because that's all gonna create beautiful flavor here and bring it up to a simmer. You'll have almost a thick pasty kind of consistency at this stage. Next, we're gonna gradually add in water until it reaches a consistency that you like. In this video, I'm using close to one liter of water, but just gradually add it a bit at a time until it gets the consistency that you desire. Next, remove the tray from the heat and place the saucepan over low heat. Then add a sieve on top, and then we want to strain all of those vegetables and that gravy mixture through the sieve. And then we'll press the veg down with the back of a ladle just to get out any extra flavor we can into the pan. And then we'll look at our gravy and see if we need to add in any more water to thin it down. Bear in mind, we want, might want to simmer it for a while. It will reduce down and thicken up as we are cooking it. So you might want to make it a little bit more watery than you would like to eat it. So it gets to your perfect thickness when you come to serve it. Don't forget to taste it and season it with salt and pepper before you serve it. That's how I make my perfect Christmas turkey and the gravy to go with it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.